uh, today's meeting and thank you for joining us. Uh, we are pleased to have with us uh, Oreo Eddy to give us a talk that is uh, from the outer Kwanzaa Basin offshore Angola, that's the study area. And the talk is about understanding salt detached contraction and strike slip faults in the translational domain within this basin. Oreo is a PhD student in the Basin Research Group at Imperial College in London. His, his, his dissertation focuses on the styles and kinematics of early stage tectonics above salt and shale bearing passive margins with the offshore Angola and the offshore Tarakan Basin in Indonesia as study areas. Oreo is also a researcher in the Indonesian Institute of Science at Lipidonesia. And prior to his PhD research, he was uh, uh, prior to his PhD work, he was a research assistant in the Geodynamics Research Group (ITB), where he consulted on and did research in structural geology and tectonics for the energy industry. So uh, we're pleased to have him and learn more about soil detached contraction and strike slip falls in the translational domain from offshore Angola. And before I hand it over to Oreo, I just want to remind you to post your questions in the chat throughout the presentation, and we'll get to them right after Oreo's talk. Thank you. Oreo, please take it away. Thank you for the introduction, Alba. So I hope you can all see my presentation. And thank you, everybody, for joining me today. And thanks also for the invitation from the APG that today I can show you my research. It is always a honor for me to explain about science, whether salt tectonic and structural geology as my current focus research, or science in general. Today, I would like to present to you about understanding salt detached contraction and structure fault in the translational domain of the Quins Basin of Sir Angola. So let me explain a little bit about the basic model of salt bearing passive margin for those unfamiliar with it. And a classical model of this type of basin, we understand that the basin can be divided into three deformation domains consisting of upper slope extensional domain represented by extensional structure, such as salt roller and rough, two of slope contractional domain represented by contractional structure, such as salt anticline, salt detached truss, and salt nape, in which these two are divided by a mid slope translational domain that has historically Critically been viewed as an area of relatively little deformation. Uh, however, relatively recent study using 2D seismic reflection data and physical model have demonstrated that the middle slope domain can be strongly deformed and experience extensional and contractional deformation. This multi-phase deformation are a result of salt translated across various geometry of basalt relief. And we realized at the time of our study that little is still known about salt detached contraction in terms of their distribution and growth in three dimensional view. So it led to our first question How does salt detached contraction now structure growth and distributed along translational domain, particularly in three dimensional view? And besides salt detached contraction, we can also observe uh, the strike slip fault in the salt bearing passive margin. For example, the salt detached strike slip fault in the Levan Basin or in the Gulf of Mexico. And the fault also have been tried to demonstrate in a physical model to understand how this structural feature was formed. Yet, we also realized that little is still known about three dimensional geometry and growth of strike slip fault in comparison to both normal and reverse fault that have been extensively studied. So our second question in our project is that, what is three dimensional geometry and distribution of salt detached strike slip fault? So these are two questions that I will try to discuss in this talk. And it is related to salt detached contraction and strike slip fault uh, in the translational domain of salt bearing passive margin. And so let's begin with the first part. This work has been recently published in Basin Research. And if you are really interested about this work, you can read it much more detail in, in the journal. So 
if you want to learn about how distribution and growth of the self-detached contraction in the translational domain, one of the best area is quantization basin of South Angola in terms of regional context. It is a passive margin setting of like a reef system. The reef system consists of northeast trending or some fracture zone, such as Martin Fass, and a several basement hike, and one of them is called Flaming of the Platform. In terms of South Tectonic province, our study area is located between extensional and contractional domain. And the cross section show much clear illustration that our study area is located above a sin reef system of Angola Gabon, Horse and Graben. Uh, this cross section also show that the formation in this area can be influenced by salt translation across basalt relief, which are reflected by the ram. Here we use a good quality 3D broad stage pre stack that migrated data, which are cropped into a basalt relief. And so this is our basalt relief map. This map show that the basalt relief can be characterized by several local structural height and three oriented ramp, which are illustrated by north, uh, northeast and northwest trending ramp. Some of this ramp can be characterized by a convex geometry, such as in the northeast Fleming platform, while several oriented ramp uh, can be extrapolated to form a concave geometries. We speculate that the north and the northwest um, ram and associate structural high were a product of a cinder of, of Amalek Gabon horse and graben system. In terms of northeast trending ram, due to similar orientation, we speculate that it might be related to previously Martin Fass transfer fault zone. Um, to understand general salt structural framework, we generate salt is a map. We identify that the salt structure consists of salt anticline, uh, the yellow color in here, and wall, which the wall can be characterized into reactive piercement, uh, uh, reactive, such as the green color in here, reactive piercement and the upper four, uh, the purple color in here, and active piercement, the cyan color in here. Some anticline and wall are, are also documented laterally squeezed with or without truss. If we overlay this map with previous basalt relief map, uh, we can see a relationship of distribution between each other. Some salt structure, which consists of salt anticline and wall parallel to underlaying orientation of Northwest, uh, North, uh, not is trending basalt relief. Still, some anticline are also located above relatively flat basalt relief, such as in here. To show distribution and type of supra salt framework, we generate a uh, Albion map. This map illustrates that the supra salt framework can be characterized by three orientation of north, northwest, uh, north is trending fault that can be identified as normal the color, truss, the green color, or strexive fault, the yellow color. And again, if you overlay this map with the previous basalt map, the suprasalt fault has a similar orientation with the basalt relief. Now we focus on the salt and clean. Uh, sorry, how they can form. In the southwest, in the southwest, we observe that the salt anticline are overlaid by thinning growth strata of intra -Albion. In the Northeast, uh, the salt anticline are overlaid by thinning growth strata of Eosin, and these thinning growth strata tend to get younger land war and oligocene strata. This observation showed that the salt anticline are formed by a diachronous growth, implying that the salt anticline start to grow in the Southwest during Albion and become younger northeastward between Eocene and Oligocene. Rams and Klim Basin above them imply that the current position of the salt anticline is not where they was formed and they have translated far away from their initial initiation position. If we focus on the salt layer, 
because it consistently observed that the salt layer are thick above landward dipping run. These observations are consistent with physical model that salt flow across upflow facing run inducing contraction and salt thickening. And the fully harmonic geometries on the intra-Albian growth strata imply that the contraction occur during the position of Albian strata resulting in inflation and deflation of salt layer. And so how about the salt wall? We observed that the active person salt wall are located on the ram down dip. The geometry is uh, characterized by rounded diaper, resembling active piercement due to shortening. Still in another cross section, the same salt wall is characterized by uh, arch roof above banded crest, resembling contraction. The pointed diaper crest indicate that this diaper was previously a reactive diaper. These two geometry indicate that the previously reactive diaper are translated across contractional hang line where thick slower moving salt present, resulting in active piercement. Yet, the same diaper in its northern margin are expressed by extension driven fall above ramdon dip. These geometry are associated with salt layer flow to another part of salt wall. During active growth of the salt wall in the salt turn part, uh, in its location above extensional hang of ram down dip also indicate that extension associated with basalt relief also enhance the extension. Uh, how about the squeeze salt wall and anticline? Ramsinkline basin imply that their current position is not where they was formed. We deduce that this salt structure were formed due to contraction as a result of salt structure translated across contractional hang at the, do at the random dip, inducing squeezing of either initial salt wall or salt core anticline. And how about the squeeze salt wall that associate with double salt detached thrust? Uh, the salt wall are located on the ramdon dip. The SS2 are consistent with contractional salt wall due to encounter salt thick, slower moving salt at the contractional hang. However, the SS3 is located at extensional hang which contradict with the physical model. So how does the salt wall and associate thrust was formed? Uh, we compare it with the section located northwestern of the section. We see that extension are still consistent with the physical model. Uh, as such, we suspect that the contraction at the SS2 here induce overburden rotation leading to formation of salt well that create a buttress to induce the inversion at the SS3. The formation of salt well due to rotation can be comparable with physical model that illustrate salt rotation can induce salt well or salt pinch out. While the inversion at the SS3 due to salt well can be comparable with contraction on mini basin obstruction due to buttress associated with basalt well. We do section restoration, and here is two of the three examples of section restoration. This section restoration are used to create a map view restoration. We do this to test whether our interpretation are make sense and consistent uh, to illustrate growth of salt detached contraction in three dimensional view, and three to calculate and understand three uh, dimensional view of absolute translation rate. And here is the translation graph that show the absolute translation rate in the north, showing by the light green, uh, center shown by the dark green, and south, uh, south shown by uh, the brown color. This graph are combined with rotation and translation rate of Evan and Jackson. 
And here, I would like to emphasize the salt structure. Uh, the salt structure, particularly salt detached contraction, can be varied in terms of time of the initiate and grew along margin. For example, in early Myosin, while the SW2 start uh, to underwent active pierceman in the south, its northern margin underwent reactive pierceman. And two, absolute translation rate, which is a value of salt and of forbidden translated basin word, can be varied along margin. Evan and Jackson, where their work are further southeast from here, show that the variation indicate a rotation of salt and of forbidden structure. However, we also suggest that the variation of absolute translation rate along margin not only can do a rotation, but also can mm -hmm. generate a strike slip fall on overburden. This is clearly shown by the translation magnitude in the north that jump above uh, the magnitude in the center during Oligocene. So to wrap up the first part, the salt detached contraction are distributed in the midst of extensional structure. This structure trend either parallel or oblique and are sometimes above flat relief or uh, directly above northwest, north, or not is trending basalt relief. Some of the structure are separated by primary salt well and their initiation and growth are controlled by interaction of salt that translated across various basalt relief as well as the salt well. And at the end, we also show that the magnitude of translation can be varied along strike and might associate with clockwise rotation of or strikes defaulting on a forbidden structure. Uh, so I will switch to the part two. I will still talk about the salt tectonic and style of deformation and salt bearing passive margin, but I will emphasize more about the thin skin structure fault in this type of basin. Uh, the preliminary the preliminary result of this work can be found in the AGU website. And again, to recap, it is based on an idea that we have observed the strike for in natural salt bearing passive margin and a physical model. Yet we still little known about the three-dimensional geometry of the strike fault itself in comparison to both normal and reverse fault that have been extensively studied. Uh, so in the first part, we show that we can observe the structure fault along the margin, and our data allow us to conduct a detailed documentation of the structure fault. And here is an ideal geometry of structure fault, where the fault can be described by their vertical throw and lateral offset. And to document the three-dimensional geometry of the structure fault, we conduct several mm -hmm. methodologies. Uh, first, displacement distance analysis. This method is conducted by a recording throw failure. Here we document not only vertical throw, but also lateral offset to discover a possibility of oblique movement. And the lateral offset are documented by calculating displacement between piercing point, such as suprasalt fold, salt structure, and channel, and uh, the depth or isopac map. Uh, the vertical throw are documented by calculating vertical displacement in a cross section with a regularly space of 125 meter interval. Uh, the lateral offset and vertical throw failure are plotted on a graph of displacement and distance. This method is used to detect a linkage between fault segment and to understand their lateral growth history. Uh, second, we do throw depth analysis. Uh, this analysis is conducted uh, by plotting the vertical throw value with that. This method is used to provide insight on fault initiation or nucleation, which is shown by the maximum displacement. This method is also used to provide insight on deep linkage during growth of the fault. And we also do isopac analysis by investigating thickness variation of growth strata around strikes the fault. We also do backstripping of our vertical throw distance data 
these two methods will provide fault nucleation and fault growth. Uh, so here it is the best salt structure and salt thickness map. As I have explained before in the first part that the salt structure can be described uh, into anticline and wall. If we see the overlay map, the salt structure parallel to the orientation of Northwest, North and uh, Northeast trending basalt relief. On the other hand, at the, at the top of salt horizon, we can also observe structure fault that can be characterized by Northeast trending. Uh, fault trace that display linear to arcuate geometry. And the structure fault uh, connects salt DFP that located in the landward with salt DFP located relatively best in wall and bone salt anticline the Northwest. The strike support also cut and form sinistral displacement on the salt wall, such as SN1 and SN1B key, or SS1, SS2, uh, A, or S2B here. And the overlay map also show relationship between strike support and basalt relief, illustrating the fault are located above northeast trending ramp and local structural height. Yet the fault are also located above relatively flat basalt relief, such as in here. And to understand general structural framework on overburden, uh, we do a detailed mapping uh, of super salt fault on the Albion, Ersen, and Lat sense using a variance attribute. And if we see perpendicular cross section along the margin, we see that the structure fault separate different contractional and extensional sub related deformation. Uh, the stress support separating the study area into six subdomains that has different intensity and type of deformation. And if we see a closer look of their geometry, in general, we can see geometry become complex younger and create a firm person point uh, around the stress support, showing sinistral displacement structure such as super salt normal fault and channel. We also see that some strikes to fault can be characterized by a singular fault trace, such as um, F3 in here or F4, but also can be described as mine segment and secondary segment, such as F1 and F2 in here. And this, uh, Two segment, uh, this strike support that has two segments, sometimes are physical linkage uh, where the linkage zone that has yellow and red color in here can be defined as an area of either pop up like structural height or asymmetrical graben like structural low. We also can observe that at slower stratigraphy, the fall consists of several short segments, such as F3 in here, giving rise to an overall enchilant pattern. We also can observe small normal fall between structure fall of F1 and F2, reflecting extensional step over between structure fall. Or a normal fault dominated space zone at the lateral tip of the structure fall. And in this map, we can also observe that uh, only F1 and F4 that can extend uh, to let me assign level. Uh, in several cross section, we can see their geometry and vertical throw. They are characterized by uh, normal and reverse throw. The cross section also show that the fall decrease in height, they are upward into progressive older stratigraphy, for example. F1 in the southwest die out in the early Miocene, like this. In the northeast, it die out into intra oligocene And we try to record their lateral offset and vertical throw versus distance. And here, the purple line show the lateral offset of some piercing point because it's consisting of channel, fold, and salt structure. Based on the lateral offset, we can define that the structure fold 
can be classified uh, into up to four small segments in each fold that uh, divided by mm-hmm. a left mm-hmm. throw offset minima or inflection point. Vertical throw are recorded at the top of Albion, Eosen, and Light Miocene that are shown by uh, the blue color, orange, and yellow in here. The vertical throw reveal multiple negative and positive value, which reflect normal and reverse throw in the cross section. The vertical throw also show in some place the throw diffused near south intrusion or albion well, uh, such as in here or here. Some throw are shown locally distributed, such as F2 throw at the top of Eosin, like this. Uh, which define the short segment of structure fold or enchelon or enchelon pattern that are observed in map view. A significant observation is that many maximum reverse and normal throw are located where the lateral offset uh, decrease downward to their inflection point, which we color red or yellow in here. This maximum reverse and normal throw reflect restraining and releasing step offer long strikes the fall. In terms of relationship with basalt relief, the fault also displaying varying degrees of physical linkage with the underlying relief such as F4 in here or F1 in here. And they also are observed on throw distance graph where the vertical throw are located above basalt relief. A key observation of the relationship between the, rel- the relief and the overlying structure fault is that the maximum throw for each fault, whether located up at the top of Albion or Eosin, are presently and broadly underlain by uh, the northeast uh, trending basalt relief. Uh, our TG plot illustrate a high resolution on distribution of the throw long strike stick fall. And we conduct the TZ analysis on each maximum throw at the top of Albion and the light near sand to identify the fault growth. Overall, the plot are characterized by broadly asymmetric profile long strike. Uh, this profile consists of up to throw maxima defined by uh, minimum uh, normal or reverse throw typically located uh, near the top of Albion, level one in here, uh, the top of Eosin or intra Eosin, level two in here, and where the F1 or the F4 are close to the south wall, uh, level the, to- uh, the, uh, the maximum throw are located at the top of early and late Miocene that are level three in here. These two throw maxima are separated by a polarity reversal, which change of strain from normal to reverse throw or vice versa, and uh, a throw minima, which typically occur in intra Eosin and near the top of the Oligocene. This throw maxima indicate that the nucleation and where it's separated by the throw minima and polar reversal indicate the deep linkage reactivation of the strike strip fault segment. We also observe a zone of low throw gradient, which indicate a blind propagation from the lower throw maxima to the throw, uh, from throw maxima downward to the top of the salt. We speculate that the throw value gradually decreases with any strain within the salt being diffused uh, before it reaches the best salt relief. Upward, from the upper throw maxima, the style of the throw decreased very along strike of individual fold, depending on the fold tip die out younger seaward or diffuse near salt wall. And in terms of support analysis, we see four key thickness pattern in the overburden, adjacent or, or indicate activity of the structure fold and associate salt structure. The first pattern, is defined by several uh, parallel uh, depot center that broadly trend perpendicular to and uh, are being offset by the structure fault, which are shown by the white color in here. We interpret this depot center reflect lateral growth of the structure fault through time. 
The second pattern is defined by the placenta that trend broadly parallel to the striated fold. We identify that they cover an area of pop-up like structural height. Thus, we interpret that there is to their distribution reflect activity of uh, the rest training step over. The third pattern is shown by several fold parallel the placenta uh, that are interpreted as trans tension related pull apart basin including uh, the releasing band, uh, color cyan in here. The fourth pattern is defined by several north trending deposenter that flank on the small normal fold between the F1 and F2, as shown by the level one in here. Interpreted to be reflect growth of this extensional step over through time. Uh, Besides this four thickness pattern reflect activity of fold segment, they also reflect growth of the lateral segment, linkage and growth of the structure fold through time. For example, at Albion H, we observe both the fold intersection deposenta and the thin unit broadly span on the entire present, uh, present day link trace length of the F1, F2, or F3. Uh, indicating this fault had al already reached their near lateral final line in Albion by forming strike linkage between their segment. Yet we also observe that the fault intersection depot center locally span on the F4, indicating this fault was locally active during Albion. We also see that distribution of the four key thickness pattern around F1, F2, and F3 a subside uh, toward Eosin and Oligocene, indicating some segment of this fold throughout an inactive period. On Miosen seabed, we see that the transstation deposenter locally distributed along the trace of the F1, while it span on the entire trace of the F4. The deposenter that span on the F1 and the F4 are located near the salt wall level SW2 or SW4 in here, suggesting the activity of this fault might be associated and were at the same time with the growth of the salt wall and consistent with our previous TZ analysis. And we conduct vertical throw backstripping to illustrate not only uh, their growth uh, vertically and laterally, but also capture similar results with previous analysis in throw distance or TX throw depth or TZ and isofoc. I will now talk much detail here in each time step. In, uh, in general, we observe that they nucleated early in Albion. They reach, yet they reach its near final length, varied. For example, in here, F2 reach its near, F2 and F3 reach its near final length during Eosan when 69 post rift history has occurred. On the other hand, the F1 and F4, they reach its final length during late myosense when 95% of post rift history has occurred. Based on previous TZ analysis, the growth style are associated with deep linkage and blind propagation upward during Eosan age. While in the myosin, they are related to local reactivation due to salt deaparison. So to wrap up the second part, the salt detached structure port in the outer conservation can be defined by up to uh, four segments that have physical link that form restraining and releasing step of four along strike. And evolution of the fault can generally define um, to nucleate early in Albion. Still, they grew fairly to establish their final length. Some fold establish their final length, followed by death and decay since Eosin, while some fold uh, grew until Meosin and Holocene. We also observe that they grew simultaneously by forming normal and reverse throw since Albion, grew up for via reactivation of deep linkage and or blind propagation in Eosin, and local reactivation due to salt deaparison in Meosin. And to conclude today's talk, uh, salt related deformation and translation in the passive margin 
uh, can vary along margin. And interaction between basalt relief, salt thickness, and timing and bulk of strain on overburden my control the salt related deformation and translate translation. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any question or comment. Hi, Aria. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> No. Thanks You're so welcome. much for uh, that lovely presentation. So yeah. we will now take uh, questions. And uh, we have some already in the in the chat box. So the first question comes from Mac. And he says, Aurea, could any of your local complex variations in style and displacement be related to vertical axis rotation of mini basins during translation? Uh, thank you, Mark, uh, for the question. Um, it could be, Mark, it could be uh, due to many, uh, many basin uh, rotation, or it could, be, it also could be due to drag force uh, of salt structure, due to uh, force from the strike support itself, uh, due to the translation, it could be. Uh, so I need to analyze more to to yeah to define whether it is related to rotation of a mini basin or or might be it is related to the the growth of the salt structure itself. Okay, thanks, Aurea. Um, So let's move on to the, the next question. Uh, May wants to know if your TZ analysis is based on present day geometry setting. Uh, yes, it is the TZ analysis. I conduct the TZ analysis based on the present day geometry setting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you've got a comment from Rodney and he says, um, thanking you for a great presentation. And I think we have one more question in the Q&A box. So we've got an, a question from Ivan. Is there any salt rehydration involved? How's the relation between salt rehydration could they be derived from the under or overlying sediments and locally developing structures? Uh, for that, uh, I have to analyze a little bit more to, to define that uh, whether there is a salt rehydration salt occur. Rehydration uh, but what I can say is that uh, the salt translated, um, not salt translated, salt flow to another part of the salt wall do, uh, based on the seismic observation. Yeah. Thanks for the comment, for the question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aurea. Mm -hmm. um, so we still have time for more questions. If um, anybody, anyone from the audience wants to, if you have uh, further questions for Aurea. And uh, while we're at, uh, waiting for more questions, Aurea, I just wondered if uh, you know some of those uh, strike sleep uh, faults that you that yeah. you you showed us were any active into the. Pliocene period, or were they just basically only active up until the upper Miocene or lower Miocene? Okay, so I have analyzed the uh, I have analyzed the seabed itself to know whether it is active or not. Uh, I have not shown it in this presentation, but uh, it only occur until the late Miocene and uh, probably hollow sense, but when I map the top of the seabed, uh, it doesn't ha 
have any relic or feature of the strike support. Okay, that's great, thank you. We still have time for questions. Right. It looks like you did a, a brilliant job. <laughs> we don't have further <laughs> questions at the moment. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Okay. Right. So um in the in the absence of further questions, I think uh Aurea would like to thank you so much for a brilliant presentation. And um, if anyone wants to, if you think of any question for Oreo, please feel free to send us an email to the Soul Taker yeah. email address, and we can forward this on to Oreo. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And thanks, Oreo. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Clara. <laughs> any comments from the other panelists? Yeah, thank you very much, Oru, and uh, we do appreciate the presentation. Very insightful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Oru. Have a nice day, everyone. You too. Have a nice day, everyone. Yeah. Bye.